Derek, let's talk about, uh, you know, the, uh, the, our, our lead up to the election 2024 and how the supposed or the supposed smaller parties are doing in preparation for the big day uh, in seven, on 7 December 2024. Well, uh, I have with me in the studio the presidential candidate of the Liberal Party of Ghana, LPG, uh, Kofi Akbalu. Um, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, uh, this will be your how many times have you contested so far oh this will be my second time your second yeah the first time was mm. 2020 okay yeah. okay so 2020 was the first time you didn't you were not here in 2016 but uh, as we prepare towards this day how's it going for the lpg really uh, lpg is going well for us uh, because uh, 2020 around this time we had mm. not even started our campaign okay and this time around We've done it. We started our campaign from 2022 uh, September. Okay. Uh, we've been campaigning. We've been going down to the people up to this time. And so the people have received us very, very well. Mm. And uh, we know we're going to make a serious impact in the next election. What, what, is, what has caused you to begin your campaign very early like that? Yeah, because uh, in the last election, because we started 6th of March 2020. And after a month, uh, there was this COVID that we had to go for a lockdown. So we came back uh, somewhere September, October. That was when we, we were allowed to campaign. Mm. So we couldn't do anything. And uh, it had a serious impact on our uh, performance. Which means you began in 2019, because the lockdown was around 2019, there about? No, 2020. Oh. You began in 2020. 2020. Okay. Mm. That was uh, because uh, we started 6th of uh, March 2020. 2020. That's mm. when we began uh, our campaign. So this time around, we've learned our lessons. Mm. So we started to start early mm. uh, to enable us to reach uh, so many people that we can. What message are you selling to the people of Ghana? You've had the two major parties, everybody trying to uh, sell a certain kind of message to the people. What are you selling? Oh, what we are selling is hope. Okay. Uh, we are selling hope. A better tomorrow. That is the theme for our manifesto. A better tomorrow. Okay. A new plan for jobs and wealth creation. Mm. Everything that we are going to embark on, the end results, should create jobs and wealth for our people. Okay. So in our government, we will be the first party to introduce child benefit in this country. Okay. Every child below 18 years will receive uh, payment. In a form. Every child below 18 Eight. years will receive payment? Yes, every oh. month. And okay. Uh, those who are above 18 years, mm -hmm. but unemployed. So the old men, including the old men and mm. women who are not on uh, formal pension whatsoever, mm. will pay them unemployment benefit. But uh, do, do we know how much you will be paying these people? Oh, yeah, we know. Mm. How, how, how much will you be paying? Uh, we're looking to pay uh, 500 cities per child. Uh, and those who are twins will pay them 750 per child. Okay. So if you happen to be a twin, you get 750 cities. And then if you are, if you are like me, who is not a twin, mm -hmm. you get 500 cities. OK. Yeah. That, that's from, from zero to what age? 18 years. To so 18? Yeah, to 18, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's what you intend to do that? Yeah, because you see, the end result is what we should look for. Mm -hmm. Because when you uh, in, uh, inject this kind of money mm -hmm. into the system, yeah. you are going to generate demand activities. OK. So people have money in their pocket. They'll go out there, buy goods and services. And as they do that, if you formalize the economy, whatever they spend their money on, it will suffer VAT. And then the VAT will come back to the state. Okay. And then when the businesses are doing well, they'll pay corporation taxes, they'll pay company taxes. And then if they pay dividends, they, the, uh, the shareholders will also pay income tax. Mm -hmm. Even the workers, they will pay income tax. That's the PAYE. Even the money that they are taking home, they will still buy goods and services, and then they will suffer VAT on that. Mm. So in, 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 uh, the end result is what we are looking at. So when you inject that money into the system, you are creating jobs, you are creating wealth. Because if your business is doing well, you have confidence to expand your activities, mm. and that will require additional labor. Okay. Assuming you are uh, running maybe a small business here in... Uh, uh, here. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are running Gary and Beans business or Banku or mm -hmm. whatever you can think of. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you decided to, because demand is going up, you can start to 
uh, open another branch somewhere. Mm -hmm. you, you yourself cannot be everywhere. So definitely employ people and they will get jobs. Okay. But you see, we want to stop importation of everything. But, but I, I want us to take it one by one. Now, you say you're going to pay children, right? Yeah. Uh, do, do you know how much it's going to cost you in a year for you to do that? Do, yeah. do you know? Uh, we, 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 we know how much it's going to cost us, but we have done the net, uh, the net outflow. The net outflow we are looking at is 4.2 uh, billion. 4.2 billion? Yeah, Ghana cities. That's, um, the, that's the net outflow. So that's what, yeah. a, a, year, and, and, and a month or what? We are talking about a year. A year, 4.2 billion. billion. Because you see, mm -hmm. when you put a dollar mm -hmm. in an economy, mm -hmm. it have to revolve around 27 times. Okay. You see, when you give money, this, you buy this, this will go here, this will go there, this will go there. Mm -hmm. It circulates. So it revolves around 27 times. So you don't look at... Uh, putting this money and that it ends all. No, that's why I gave you uh, mm. a, a clear cut that when you get the money, when you buy goods and stuff, the moment you, you spend the money, you are suffering VAT. Mm -hmm. The VAT will come to, back to the state. So okay. I give you the money, mm -hmm. but the money will come oh, back in a different form. Okay, so that's, that's how you're looking at yes, for the, the money to involve. No, that's you know? how economy should look like. Okay. You see, when you're running an economy, you have to always consider injecting money to a system to generate demand activities. Mm. Because if people are not buying, that economy will suffer. Mm. It's like blood. It's a blood. In a cash is a blood. Mm. You have to flow in the economy. If it doesn't flow, the economy will start. You see? So, uh, we, we, uh, you, you see the shirt you are wearing? Mm -hmm. Very nice shirt. Mm -hmm. Made in Ghana. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, if people have money and they are buying this kind of shirts, the, those who are producing this will produce more. Okay. And then when they walk to the bank for a loan to expand their business, the bankers will be ready to give them the money because they know that what the, what the quantity that they produce, there's money in the system to buy them. Okay? okay. So the banks will not be afraid to lend out. So, that, so running an economy, you need to look at all these factors. Mm. Other than that, if you keep everything to yourself, nothing will happen in the economy. Mm. You know, when you go to the advanced economies, they pay unemployment benefit, they pay child benefit, they pay this benefit, even they pay your house, your rent. If you are not working, they pay your rent for you, they do this for you. Not that they have more money than us, mm. but they believe that when they inject those monies, it helps small businesses to grow. Okay. And the small businesses will employ people. Mm. Okay. Mm. If you have a mommy and daddy shop somewhere, at least it, it, it's occupying mommy or it's occupying daddy. Okay. Or maybe he's copying, uh, occupying a, a, a shop assistant. That person is getting paid every month. You know, so every small business is smart. We have to help all the small businesses to grow. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we, we don't have any economy. I mean, my nominal, uh, just checking, I guess that the money will be more than you're proposing. Anyway, no. but, but I'm sure you, are, you, you look at it. No, but, no, 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 we know what we're talking mm -hmm. about. We have done our calculations. Yes, you're looking at zero to, zero, zero to 18. I'm no. saying that if I look at the census that, I, that I, the I, I have you, done. Uh -huh. I gave you, I said, mm -hmm. net outflow. Yes, I get you it. See. But I'm saying that so it will be more we, than... We, we have mm -hmm. inflows mm -hmm. and then the outflows. Yes. So the end resource mm -hmm. is the net outflow. Uh -huh. How that, much that's are you? Yeah, then I'm saying that it will be more than that. But that's fine. Let's accept it. How are you? Because we've always we are in a country where government in government I will complain that we don't have money. We don't have money. How, what's your source of funding this sort of initiative? Yeah, we have money. If anybody tells we don't have money, it's a lie. Mm. We have money. Okay. You know, every year we borrow money to buy cocoa, aren't we? Mm. And when we borrow, we call that money what? Syndicated loan. Syndicated. And we borrow in dollars. Is that not it? Mm. But when we bring that dollars, do we use the dollars to pay the cocoa farmers? We don't give them dollars. We give them what? Cities. Cities. So, so where do we get the cities to pay them? It means the cities, the cities were sitting somewhere. And then we brought the dollar, and then we took it, and then even before... No, 19, but that's, you, are, you are exchanging for you to no, get So that, where is that money sitting that was exchanging from? Bank of Ghana, is that not it? So you take the money from Ga exactly. Bank of Ghana? Exactly. You have, to, you have to inject the money in the economy. I will not borrow money to buy cocoa. When I become president, I will not do that. Because prior to 1992, mm. we were not borrowing to buy cocoa. Why should we borrow money to buy cocoa and suffer uh, interest and transactional uh, charges? charges? You see, mm. we waste money. You know, re the recent borrowing, we borrow $800 million. Mm -hmm. And then they, they give them two tranches. The first tranche was $600 million. Do you know how much came? It was $541 million. Mm -hmm. So $59 million went waste okay. to advisors and all this, blah, 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 blah. We wasted the money. If we had not borrowed, and, or maybe we had borrowed from Bank of Ghana, okay, the same amount of money, 
That 59 million would have gone to Bank of Ghana and then the advisors, whatever, in Ghana here. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Cocoa board, when they, when they would take their time to sell the beans, when the beans money come, it goes straight to Bank of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. So if anybody tells you there's no money in Ghana, Ghana, we don't use dollar, we use cities. So cities will control the city. It's government. So when I become president, I have to uh, be able to borrow money from Bank of Ghana to inject in the economy. Okay. Because if you go to Agogoshi and so many places, people are sleeping uh, in kiosks, uh, containers, and whatsoever. And if you borrow money to build housing, I don't see anything wrong from Bank of Ghana because if you want to build houses, cement, iron rods, and everything, you buy them in cities. Mm. Are you okay? Mm. If you want to do our roads, why should we go and borrow money? Whilst we can get the money sitting in the Bank of Ghana. Mm. So it's about how we organize our system. But we believe that what the white man will tell us is what we should always follow. When we went to UK, UK in the dollar, between the dollar and then the euro, or the sterling, the same exchange rate has been since. It has never changed. It has never changed. 1.25 1. 1. to, to the sterling. 1.26, 1. 1.26 to the sterling. But, but it changes then. No. 1.25 and 1.26. It, it, it's it's around the same margin. You mean the, 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 the increase is not too huge? No, it is the same, around mm -hmm. the same. But look, uh, when I was young, okay, mm -hmm. uh, the CD to the dollar was 33 pesos. Okay? Mm -hmm. But now, how much? It's 13 cities. Okay? Why? So something must be done and done properly. Okay. So because of our but, but let, let, let me our dependency mm. on the dollar, okay, running our economy, mm. that is why we keep on suffering. People are suffering. So if you are a worker like yourself, you are a worker, they pay you less than 5,000 cities a month. Mm. That 5,000 cities cannot take you anywhere because the moment you get that money, when you convert them into dollar, it's less than $400. Okay? Mm. It's less than $400. What, what can you use the $400 for? A whole month? You can use it for anything. But if you're able to manage our, uh, if you take away this uh, dollar dependency, okay, and everything is city, 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 you want to get 5,000 cities, you'll be a big man. Mm. How superior is your, so your plan is that you would, you would, you would pay, you would, you would pay salaries to young children and also older people. That, that, that's the yeah, sort they, of policy you're bringing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that is to, to ensure that money will revolve uh, in, the uh, economy. in the economy. Now, so how is that superior to, say, a 24-hour economy being proposed by the NDC? How would that be superior to, you know, the plan the, of the MPP industrializing the economy, creating factories in, in, yeah. in many of these? You see, uh, because I didn't have enough time to tell you what we would do, mm. uh, but I'll say something here. Hey, but but well, you, you can complete what you do, then you come okay. to my, my, right. my, my, my question. We, we, uh, aside this payment, mm -hmm. we are also looking to set up a $10 billion job fund. That's, we are using a, a figure, a $10 billion job fund, to assist the young people with career visions, mm. to go into business, to uh, realize their visions. Mm. We believe that when they do that, they will employ themselves and they will employ other people. Mm. When we are in government, we're going to stop importation of rice, we're going to stop importation of poultry, because after six months in government, there won't be any importation of poultry here. Because it doesn't take more than two months to get a broiler ready to the market. So in government, I should deliberately find money, give it to poultry farmers, make sure they produce more than they are producing now, to feed us and also export to our neighbors, like Togo, Burkina Faso, and Niger, because we have the same uh, problem. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not thinking of exporting to Europe or whatever, mm -hmm. where there will be too much conditions or whatever. But uh, within our neighbors here, we should want to supply na our neighbors to deliberately we put about less than $500 million uh, to, uh, in, to, to the poultry farmers. Mm. Huh? Let's you get about 50 farmers, give them $10 million, $10 million. You, you ask them to produce enough for our consumption. You're not going to import uh, poultry. You create jobs and you create wealth. Now, how, when, how, how much can the $10 million produce? The $10 million, it can produce a lot. It can produce a lot. If you give $10 million to the apple farms, or you give $20 million to uh, to, uh, top man, mm. top man farms, they will produce more than we, they are producing now. So it deliberately you give, if, when you inject $500 million into the economy to produce uh, poultry, my brother, mm. we can feed the whole country. Okay? We can mm. feed the whole country with poultry. We, we will not even need to import anything to this country. But remember, 
When you are doing that, people will be thinking that, oh, those who are importing are going to destroy their business. They're not going to destroy their business. You direct them to go and buy from our farmers okay. and bring them to the market. Even they will rather give them advanced payment. So they are going to help them to produce more. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have to create a deliberate policy around what we consume. Dresses, whatever. We should import, we should import them. We should give uh, people money to start producing the shoes we wear. The, the, the dresses we wear. Mm. That's what we are going to do. Everything that we consume here, and more so, you have lithium, you have uh, bauxite, you have this. You should have a deliberate policy to add value to them. If you don't add value to them, mm. you're not, you not doing anything. You are harming yourself. So as a country, when we are in government, we are going to make sure we deliberately find money to inject in adding value to our natural resources. Mm. Because over here, if you build a refinery to add value to manganese, or uh, bauxite, you are creating aluminium, okay? You are cre creating alloys. And, and at the end result is that you're going to have a, a manufacturing plant to produce vehicles here without importing vehicles, engine blocks, everything, even uh, airplane parts and the rest, you can produce them here. Because most of them are produced with what? Bauxite, and bauxite comes from alo uh, some aluminium, mm. comes from bauxite. Mm. So this is what we are going to do. We look at, uh, our economy, we realize that there are a lot of young people who have brilliant ideas, but they don't have hope. So in government, we are going to target these young people, support them with the needed capital to enable them to realize their vision. Mm. Because a person like uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates, they started when they were young. Steve Jobs and the rest, they started when they were young. But in America, deliberately, they identify these young people, give them the needed support for them to realize their vision. But here, you have to struggle to get your own thing done. Mm. And people are not able to dream big, to think big, and mm. do big stuff because they're afraid that they will not get the necessary capital to do whatever they're supposed to do. But I want to promise Ghanaians that when I become president, you can dream any, any dream that you want to dream and will support you to make that uh, uh, reality. You see, when you go to the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 29, uh, verse 28, it says, lack of vision, that mm. people perish. Lack of vision, that people... I, think, I, th I thought you said lack of knowledge. No. My, my people perish. No, this is lack of vision. In, in, the, in the Proverbs that yes. I quoted? Yes, chapter 29, verse 28. Okay. And then when you go to the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, it says that, a time is coming that I, Lord, will pour my spirit on all flesh. Mm. And then your old men and women will see dreams. And the young people will see what visions. So if your young people are going to see visions, and they is telling that you that lack of vision, the people perish, mm. it means vision is very, very important. And I have the conviction that every young person around has a vision. But what they need now is they need their support. So when I become president, it will be on my neck. To make sure every young person, whether you are an NDC, you are an MPP, you are Frafra, you are Dagati, you are an Eve, you are whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you are a Ghanaian. And then we're going to turn this country into a land of opportunities for every young person to make it right here. Without traveling, you can sit here and make it. You know, we have AI, okay? The young person, young people should be taught how to, I mean, turn their ideas into mm. something. Mm. So when I become president, from basic school, from primary school, Okay, you will learn com computer programming. It's going mm -hmm. to be compulsory subject mm -hmm. for every young chap from basic school, primary school, class one, class two, class three, class four. You will learn computer programming. So by the time you reach SS, I mean, you can do a lot of pro uh, applications on your own. Okay. Without necessary, uh, we, we want to create billionaires. Mm -hmm. That is our target. We want to create millionaires and mm -hmm. billionaires in this country. And it's possible. We can do it. Will you be taking from the Bank of Ghana to do this as well? Why not? It's our money. If the one is sitting there. Now let me let me take let me take you to Russia. When we, we had this Russia and Ukraine war, you know the uh, the EU and then the Americans uh, uh, gave a whole lot of uh, restrictions to sanctions to the Russia. Russians, and thinking that the uh, Russia rubles is going to rumble, okay? But before they realized, they were depending on their on their rubles, and now the rubles have been strengthened. Do you know why? Because you have to use your brain to do things. We don't allow anybody to sit somewhere and be dictating to you. You have to use your own brains to act to what you have. Mm -hmm. So what they had was that, hey, if you want to buy from them, you have to use rubles. 
So now you have to change. The demand for robots went high. And anything that demand goes up, definitely yeah, you have to yeah, pay more. Yeah. So this is what we do. If you have our cocoa, you have our gold, you have our diamond. But now, as it, as it stands now, most of our these natural resources are not ours. We have given it to foreigners. Because they'll take 90% and they'll give us 10%. When I become president, those things will not happen. Because we need to bring Ghanaians together mm. to put resources together to do big stuff. Now, if I call Methodist or Pentecost and I sit down with the uh, chairman of Pentecost, that, uh, Mr. Chairman, you have a lot of people following you in this church. They have money. Some have money, some don't have. But if you can get, let's say, all your members to come together and put resources together, mm -hmm. they can run this uh, industry. You see? If, let's say, one million people in Ghana here decide to bring $1,000 each, it's $1 billion. If one million Ghanaians come together and say they are contributing let, uh, let's say thousand dollars each is one billion dollars. You don't need to travel out to go and get that money. You can bring Ghanaians together and collectively they invest their money into something. You may not have the know-how, you may not have the technical know-how, but you can employ people who have the know-how and work for you. But that's already happening, isn't it? Where, uh, where people form partnerships to, uh, to establish businesses, Ghanaians. Like, uh, Oh, but I mean, we have industries in Ghana that Ghanaians are running. They are like, oh, fine. what you're saying, you, no, you, no, I, I mean, you let them come together with money and then they set up to employ good. people, isn't it? I, I, good. And, and I'm saying that's already happening, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, good. But your oil, who is running your oil? A Stanley Oil and Adaco Cosmos Energy. Who is running your gold? Your gold is Newmont, Anglo Gold, Gold First. They are running your gold. Mm. Okay, now then the latest one is the lithium. They gave it to some young, some young chaps in Australia. Mm. Okay, no, I don't believe that. I believe that we need to form our own company, owned by Ghanaians, flow shares, strengthen the uh, Ghana stock exchange, the stock market. Let's strengthen it so Ghanaians will understand. That is why when you go into LPG manifesto, we are mm. saying that from basic school, yeah, right from basic school, we are going to teach our kids savings and investment culture. So that by the time you, you finish school, you, you understand what they call savings and investment. Mm. Because people get money, they think what they're earning is less, so they cannot save. If you're earning 500 cities, you can still save 50 cities. So assuming you're earning 450, you will survive on the 450. So you can't tell me that if you're earning 500, you cannot leave 50 cities and save. But if you understand that, that part of life, mm. that savings and investment will lead you to become a millionaire, then you want, you, you, no matter how much you're earning, you still pass some and save it. Mm. That is how we are going to teach our case because okay. we know that our capital market is not strong. In Africa, our problem in Africa is capital formation. Okay. We are not able to come together collectively and put monies together to do big stuff. That's why you go to the book of Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. It says some people came together to build the Tower of uh, Babel. Mm -hmm. They came together collectively to put the ideas, to put everything together, to put that tower. And God said, because the people are one, whatever they plan to do, they will execute it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 to 6, it says, cast your bread, and then in the future you have it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to church, they will tell you, oh, to abode, don't you go up on the Nenada, to build the money to church. But is, no, is, it's not that. Is, is, isn't, is, isn't government doing that already through the T-bills that they... they no, treasury bills... It's mm. part of investment, you understand? Yeah, government that's, gets that, that, that's not the kind of investment we're talking about. Okay. They're talking about funds, okay? Mm. Whereby you bring money, I bring money, and then you have a purpose that these funds, we are investing into this. Okay. Okay? Mm. Now, we will say, we can even go beyond Ghana and go and invest. If you okay. take Newmont, who is the owner of Newmont? Newmont doesn't have a single person as the owner, okay? Collective investment, they have put together and they are running new mm. months and they are taking all our goals. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. now when I become president, I want to help you, uh, the one who is watching me here, mm. I want to help him, myself, yourself, and then we all put our monies together. If let's say we are one million people, and this person bring 100 Ghana, 100 Ghana this morning, this afternoon, 100, 100 Ghana is 100 million. Yeah. So you see, but my 100 cities cannot do anything. But if collectively we all put that money together, it becomes with something. something. Mm. And then we can invest into something. So how superior is this to the two proposals from the two parties? 
Uh, your, your plan. You're talking I mean, about a 24 hour economy. Exactly, 24 hour, and this one is also saying I'm going oh, to industrial. You see, I'm going to... you see the 24 hour economy, mm -hmm. you yourself you know. I don't, Assuming I don't know. you are in Tetrim mm. or Ahafo, in Mim, and somebody comes to tell you that I'm going to build 24 hour economy there, and then you also accept it. Hey, there's something wrong. Ah, ah there's something wrong with your thinking. If, some, if you are in Ogoso or uh, Achilinsua, or maybe uh, for about the mm -hmm. and somebody walks to you and says, Oh, uh, we're going to build 24 hour economy here. And then you carry some t shirts and then you are jumping and you are uh, dancing. That you, there's going to be 24 hour economy there. There's something wrong with your thinking. Uh -huh. how, is, how is it going to happen? But the, the, no, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, purpose that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. No, where in Ghana mm -hmm. will this happen? Where in Ghana will this happen that they're going to be 24 hour economy somewhere? Do you understand what 24 hour economy is? It means that 24 hour economy, like this daytime, how, what is happening, is going to happen everywhere. Let me give you one typical example. This company, Joy, mm -hmm. they run 24 hour. Yes. Is that not it? Yes. But the number of people who work in the daytime, are they the same number working in the evening? No. Because in the evening, you don't need the accounts people. You don't need the marketing people. You don't need the human resource people. You don't need the administration. Even the drivers, you don't need all of them. It is because the conditions are not there for this to be here. But the party no, no, is saying that. Condition? No, no, no. The who party is, is saying that I will create it, that no, people no. can work in the that, night. And then you also believe that it's going to happen. Because in the night, who, mm. what you need is only the presenter here, or maybe your software is doing the night uh, thing. And then maybe the DJ who is playing music. And then the technician. The, and then the security people. These are the people you need here. You see, the night is going to buy out of it. We, that you need the service of an accounts or marketing people or the sales people. You don't need them. So if somebody tells you that it's going to run 24 hour economy, it's a hoax. The person is misleading you. So if you don't understand, you, I know, say you are doing uh, what do you call it? Uh, you are being the, uh, the devil's advocate. So you are asking me these questions, I understand. But I know it's not you. But those people out there will understand that. Charlie, it's not going to happen. It's a lie. Because the, the person who is proposing 24 hour economy is also telling you that it's, mm. going, it's not going to allow uh, the restriction on what? Importation of goods and services coming to this country. Okay. You know, All the right. last uh, budget, mm. when Katie Yaman went to mm. Parliament, with some kind of restrictions on importation. I hear. They were fighting. So if yeah. the same person comes back to tell it's going to do 24 hours, what is it going to do? I hear. Okay. Uh, but 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 is your do you have what about representation in, in throughout the, the, the country? I mean regional uh, regional basis. Do you what's what what's oh, yeah, we have we, we have men and women who are representing the party everywhere. Uh, yeah. Including MP uh, uh, uh -huh. Oh yeah uh, it's not every Consistency that we are going to mm. put a candidate there. We are going to be measured and then okay. make sure there are some consistency that we believe that we can do all there. That's where we put candidates. But you have offices in every constituency? Oh, yes, we do. The we constitution? Do. Not, all the, not, not all the constituencies. Okay. But we have the 189. We have. One, the yeah. 189. Yeah, that's, okay. the, that's the requirement from the AC that you have to test of all the constituencies in the country, and we have. All right, Mr. Palu. Thank you for coming. I wish you all the best. Uh, I'm sure 2024 will come. We'll but, see. But I believe you uh, you vote for me after uh, hearing me. Well, like they say, everybody's vote no, no, is see, secret. No, so I will, okay, I understand. No, yes, but so, so you, when, don't, you don't, when, don't want anybody to. So when that. you go, when you get into the box, then you yeah. decide. You but know. but compare yeah. mine to the 24 hour economy and then vote. But you're not only fighting against 24 hour economy. You're also no, fighting against. No, no, uh, because, uh, because uh, there's uh, no much yeah. time. Because there's no okay. much time for me to talk about about me. I would. Okay. I would have because you mentioned 24 hour economy. That's why. Okay. But if you have given me the time to talk about the Baumia one, then it would have been different. So if I ask you, what, what do you have to say about Baumia's plan? Because you don't have enough time, so I don't want to... I, I can give you a minute for you to oh, do Oh, a minute, a minute will not be enough. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Palo. It's a pleasure. This. Yes.